Thank you, Dr. Badani, and thank you, Dharmendra and Ruturun, for inviting me. And today I'm going to talk on the role of HPA1C in pregnancy because this is something which I would like to start with the basic that how hemoglobin is attached, I mean, so glucose is attached to the hemoglobin, and that is that has become a main stay for measuring glycemic control, especially in a diabetic population. But is it really true for our gestation diabetes patient? That is what I'm going to discuss. As you all know, 97% of the total hemoglobin is HbA, where HbA2 and HbF is also having some proportion. And if it is altered because of this, that may be that various hemoglobin number. But when glucose is added to hemoglobin, that is non-enzymatic glycation method, that is HbA1A1. HbA1A2, HbA1B, and HbA1C. When out of this, HbA1C is the 80% of the total proportion. And basically, it's the glucose which binds to end terminal of the hemoglobin of the beta chain that becomes a pre HbA1C. And by amyloric rearrangement, it becomes ketoamine, that is HbA1C. That is what exactly we are. Measuring. Now, why HbA1c become so popular in last 15-20 years? Because it is free of day to day fluctuations. Two days taken or not, this test need not to be done in a sedentary position or uh, cannot be done after exercise. Or after. It, it can be done at any point of time. And it gives idea Three month average sugar because RBC lifespan is around 90 to 120 days. But because there is always there is new RBCs are produced, it gives better idea of last one month HP average sugar because it gives 50 percent contribution to that. And previous month contribution is 25 percent. So this is very important that if recently patient is having very high sugar. Then his HbA1c may go up. That doesn't mean that for last three months, person is having uncontrolled sugar. How to interpret like uh, hemoglobin that is fine by HbA1c, but can HbA1c lead you to a wrong direction? Yes. If person is having hemolytic disease, shortened red blood cell survival and recent blood loss, it may give low HbA1c. Is having high deficiency anemia, hemoglobinopathy, carbamylated hemoglobin, even matter is not proper. For HPMC, I will take you through the HPMC method, which is gold standard borodefinity method, and to some extent, in the enzymatic method, immunoassay method can be done, but if it is not done properly, it may give you wrong direction. So, for that, HPLC is the gold standard. I have seen electrophoresis methods are there, but not popular, not that standardized. Moron affinity method is for point of care device, which we are using widely. Immunoassay, there are a number of labs which are doing immunoassay, but it depends which type of immunoassay they are using, and that uh, standardization may vary. So, HPLC is the mainstay of measuring HbA1c. This is having three step application of hemosilate, illusion, and then detection. Now, it is having excellent precision, and that's why it is considered as gold standard method. And anything else which is nearer to HPLC is boron affinity method. But when I'm talking about usage of HPA1C in pregnancy, this thing we have to understand. Dr. Sensei has given beautiful lecture today. Before second trimester starts. Why? Because nowadays we are getting number of patients who are not having gestational diabetes. We are picking up many pre-gestational diabetes, pre-diabetes, which may have higher chances of become gestational diabetic in future. And this is the time we can intervene. And along with that, if we measure it early. We can treat, we can closely monitor the sugar level throughout the pregnancy and we can end up with a better outcome. Usually, OGTT is the standard test. OGTT is something where we are giving glucose to the patient and we are measuring sugar after one hour and two hours. That is considered a gold standard to detect and to diagnose GTM. But 
it doesn't give much emphasis on fasting blood glucose and HbA1c is a very good collaborative. After so many years, now HbA1c is accepted as a diagnostic criteria for type 2 diabetes by ADN last for five years. And so if patient is having GDM, then her HbA1c should be less than 5 because anything beyond 5.3 HbA1c may have altered glycemia during the gestation period. And patient is having type 1 or type 2 diabetes, our target is too stringent, then we should target 6 if possible. Especially type 1, it is difficult. So we usually tell if it is possible without hypoglycemia. And as uh, my previous speaker has already interpreted, even after multiple doses of insulin and insulin pump therapy, Sometimes we are not getting that optimal result, but criteria are so stringent. So if patient is having HbA1c, which is high during the first trimester, especially between 5.7 to 6.5, we can depict early pre-gestational diabetes and we can intervene exactly at that time, at the time of embryogenesis. And that will lead for to a better pregnancy related outcome. So this is very important that we should go for HbA1c screening along with RBC, RBS or fasting blood glucose because in ANC profile, <coughs> previously we were only doing either random blood sugar or fasting blood sugar. But fasting blood sugar always will not give you that idea. So in ANC profile, whenever patients coming to a gynecologist clinic or your chamber or any uh, general physician chamber with pregnancy, she should be checked for her HbA1c along with fasting sugar level. And if it is anything beyond 5.3, should be with concern. And if it is between 5.7 to 6.5, it elevates. And you can see when patient is having HbA1c any level more than 5.7, it is related to preterm birth, spontaneous birth, term, uh, spontaneous preterm birth, as well as hypertensive disorders. So this is very important that if we can improve that So what is universal HbA1c screening protocol? We should follow. It is still not accepted by all because uh, as Dr. Sese has already shown that each and every guideline, even US is having different guidelines, different cut of tools. So there is nothing standardized. The protocol for HbA1c at present to utilize in gestational diabetes. But if patient is having HbA1c more than 5.7, you should go for early gestational diabetes screening. Mm -hmm. And what is screening? What is the diagnostic tool? That will be oral close of tolerance test only. So you should go for that thing. And if HbA1c is more than 6.5, then patient is already having diabetes. If we reduce HbA1c, do we have data that it improves pregnancy outcome? Yes. This is one of the papers where lowering HbA1c by 0.5 percentage improves large for gestation age uh, with risk reduction of 0.88 and neonatal hypoglycemia with absolute risk reduction by 0.93. So this is very important that if we intervene early in such type of patient by reducing HbA1c also, this gives an important one. But along with that, we have to understand the pregnancy is a state where RBCs are producing very fast. Okay. There is a stage of hemodilution during the second stage of pregnancy. So HbA1c in second or third stage of I mean third trimester will not be as accurate to diagnose or to conclude. So first trimester HbA1c very good. But along with that, if you are depicting any abnormality in HbA1c or a glycemic status, then self monitoring of blood glucose, if needed. Continuous glucose monitoring may be a very important marker to maintain that you glycemia or to achieve better glycemic control in our pregnancy related patients. Because HbA1c gives you an idea of last one to three months, maybe fructosemine glycated albumin be also helpful. So I would just touch one or two slides on fructosemine also because this is also another test we can go for. It is a glycated protein. And glycated protein includes albumin and as well as other circulating protein, but that remains with the half life of 
around 10 to 15 days. So fructosamine gives you idea of last 15 days or 20 days blood sugar. So you can utilize this test also to see overall glycemic status when you are doing the photo. Fructosamine, the uh, normal range is 175 to 275. That is the normal range. So any fructosamine more than 222 is also related to higher preponderance of gestures and habits. So you can utilize this fructosamine test also. But pitfall of fructosamine, it is not as standardized as HbA1c. There are very few labs actually doing good fructosamine. So that you have to keep in the mind. And any condition where there is hypoalbuminemia, Liver disease will not give you a very good average sugar by metal. So, what recommendation says use HbA1c to diagnose early pre gestational diabetes, especially in, pre, uh, I mean in first trimester. But once patient is having diabetes, once patient is diagnosed having gestational diabetes, then self monitoring blood glucose plus or minus continuous glucose monitoring is something that we should go for. Goal is to educate patient. Goal is to identify early by using this HbA1c. So I will say instead of seeing HbA1c to see the glycemic control during the pregnancy, use it to early diagnose. Use it even in a preconceptional stage so we can treat that mild dysglycemic status to a normal glycemia as early as possible. Thank you.